Hey everyone, I'm Rachel, I have hamsters, and today I'm gonna to show you how I set up my rainbow playpen for my dwarf hamsters and robo hamsters. So I have these size large of this nylon polka dot playpen, and uh, this is the biggest one. It's about five feet across or so, so it's a pretty good amount of space I find for my dwarf hamsters. And um, it's pretty hamster proof too. I've never had any issue with them getting out. The one thing they can do is chew on the nylon bottom. So I like to cover that up with the towels and then the white fleece because it just looks nice. And it also makes sure that the, the floor is nice and soft for them. And that way if they do climb on something and tumble, there's no risk of injury which is of course pretty important. If you have a Syrian hamster, um, this is an okay amount of space, but I'm pretty sure Syrians can get out of this playpen, so you might need to, uh, to supervise that pretty closely. And of course, with any new hamster, you'll wanna watch them pretty closely. My hamsters just never seem interested in escaping, and the only time they do seem interested in escaping is if they want to go home. So I just pay attention, I listen to their scratches and their body language, and when they look like they're ready to go home, I take them home. So you'll see, I've spent some time collecting some rainbowy colored things here. And um, it took me some time to gather up items that I felt like looked good in this <laughs> pretty bright playpen. To be honest, I'd love something a little more neutral, but this is what's out there, so I'm making it work. <laughs> and it's taken some time to figure that out, but it does make some for some good pictures, especially depending on your hamster's coloring, they can look really cute with the, the white background and the rainbows. So here's a hemp digging area that I've left there in these acrylic trays and I just sprinkle some Higgins seed mix in there. I like to use playpen time as a foraging time for my hamsters. I find most of them seem to enjoy searching and hunting for food. <laughs> this is a major activity for them. For peanuts, I do like to give my hamsters peanut treats once in a while, um, but for my dwarfs and robos, they can't open the peanut on their own, so I usually just kind of squish it get it started for them and then I can leave it for them somewhere and they usually get excited and carry it off somewhere and nibble on that. I also like to feed them these grain free puffs from Serenity Kids. I have two flavors. This one is the beet. I also have a spinach broccoli one that is popular amongst my hamsters and I just break them up because they're pretty big and I just have little dwarf hamsters so they don't need a whole puff. I also have this flower and herb mix from Redwood Grove. I believe this is the signature blend that I have here. Um, this is what I got with my first and only so far shipment from Redwood Grove. I got a lot of stuff, so it's lasting me quite a while. And I find my hamsters seem to like the flowers. Sometimes I see them nibbling on them. Mostly I see them just kind of smelling them and enjoying that. So if it's enriching to them, I'm fine with it. Plus it looks pretty, so why not? All right, so this is more or less the finished product, although I do often make changes to it, keep things interesting for my hamsters, and you know, depending on what I have in their cages. So I have two of these comfort wheels. This is the eight and a half inch comfort wheel, and that one over there is the 12 inch. Um, I find that my dwarf hamsters, my Campbell's dwarfs, can use either of these sizes, but my small robo, Sophia, she's about 25 grams. She can only push the eight and a half size. The 12 inch size is a little too big for her. So if you have a small robo, you probably wanna stick with the eight and a half inch size. And I like these comfort wheels because they're just like pretty cheap, um, you know, easy to care for because they're all plastic. I do put a little weight on the base because they're pretty flimsy and they tip over easily. And um, it also helps my hamsters climb into them because they're a little bit high off the ground and they're not adjustable. So uh, that's why those little weights are there. You could also place them inside of a sand bath or inside of like a digging area, like that hemp digging area that I have in the center there. And that would also, you know, help stabilize the base and allow them to climb up. So you'll see I also have lots of little tunnels and lots of little glass jars. This is one that I've saved. Um, that's about a three inch opening, which is pretty safe for any hamster. I would say for dwarfs, I try to stay at no less than two inches, maybe uh, two and a quarter. So this one is plenty big enough for my dwarf hamsters. If you have Syrians, you definitely wanna stay with a three inch opening minimum diameter and probably that size jar would be too small. I would probably stay away from jars with a Syrian hamster. They're just, 
they're just a bit big for jars. <laughs> but for dwarfs and robos, they love those jars. And I always like to keep a Missouri lab block in there and they go in there and nibble for a while. They seem very happy. And you'll see I have these clear tunnels. These are about two and an eighth inch wide. And I'd like to try to create pathways for my hamsters to kind of get around. Um, the tunnels are nice because it makes them feel a little bit safer because they don't have to spend so much time out in the open. And uh, yeah, I find these work fine with my dwarf hamsters. If you have bigger dwarfs and sometimes winter whites or um, when you have hybrid hamsters, they can get pretty large. So if you have a large dwarf hamster, I would maybe stay away from these tunnels, but anyone smaller, you're okay. And here's one of those peanuts. <laughs> I put it in that fleece snuggle sack. I got these snuggle sacks and the bee one that you see in front of you. Um, those are all from Owl Make It, I believe, on Etsy. And I'll leave links to everything I'm talking about below in the comment section of this video in case you're interested. But I do find they like to go in there and nibble and they're really easy to care for. I just stick these in the wash. This B1 has a wire frame so that it stays open as a tunnel. And again, I can wash, I've washed them. They, they turn out just fine and I have to use, um, I don't even have my own washer dryer and they still perform fine. So if that's something you're concerned about. I also like to use some sheet moss throughout the enclosure just to add a little bit of color and some soft spots to to rest and you can see I have an alligator whimsy there. These little <laughs> seesaws, I'm not sure if my hamsters really care for them or not but it does just kind of add to the overall ambiance of the playpen. They often like to hide under them so I like to just give them lots of spaces to hide under. You'll see all the rainbow bridges I've also set up so they can either use them as a, a ladder to get into the digging area or to go under which is pretty important. And I have they come in two in twos, those rainbow bridges, bendy bridges. So I just have two packs of two. It's a pretty good deal, really. You can do a lot with a few bendy bridges, for sure. And uh, these digging areas, this is hemp fiber. And I did a video about using hemp in my enclosures a couple weeks ago. I was giving it a try. And um, yeah, I like hemp. It's a nice alternative fiber, a nice alternative um, a substance for them to you know dig through and, and enjoy so and it's it's soft it's definitely softer than aspen to be honest um, so I like to sprinkle seeds as you saw and the flower mix and I always keep you know the sunflower heads in there it's just something different for them to do and they seem to enjoy it these sunflower heads are from Redwood Grove shop and I'm sure you've seen them in previous videos of mine if you've watched them um, and uh, those little blocks are just pumice stone blocks. I use them just as help for my hamsters to get in and out of the digging areas, since especially my robos have trouble climbing up. Um, I wouldn't specifically recommend those, those blocks, I'm not sure. I got them to help file down nails, but I don't know if they really help. That is some oat spray and some wheat spray. <laughs> my hamsters do seem to like the wheat spray, but the oat spray, this one, is sort of like hit or miss. Sometimes they're interested and sometimes not. Um, definitely not a favorite spray. And there's a pumpkin seed. I try to use these sparingly, but um, they are well loved by all of my hamsters. This is the seven and a quarter inch exercise disc for uh, I use this for my dwarf and robo hamsters. Um, I have tried the 12 inch, but it was a little big for mine. You wanna make sure that their backs are straight when they're running. So this size works for all of my hamsters. Um, the size small, which is four and a half inches, way too small for any hamster in my opinion. If you have a Syrian or Chinese hamster or maybe a bigger dwarf, you might wanna go with the 12 inch size if you do the exercise disc. It's definitely not a necessity, but I find my hamsters seem to like using it and um, it seems to be enjoyable for them to run on and, and have fun with. So just make sure they're using it safely and that they're not flying off. Um, sometimes younger hamsters have trouble controlling themselves on these. So, you know, an older, more experienced hamster will probably do better on an exercise disc I found than a younger one. This rainbow bridge is one of my favorite items. This is from Rosewood Pets, I believe. Again, I'll leave a link to it down below if you're interested. And it's just so pretty and cute. My hamsters like to go over it and under it. It's just a good multi-use 
uh, thing to have around. And I like to put treats up top. Sometimes I stuff sprays in the little gaps of the bridge steps um, to provide some additional enrichment. And in the back there is that wooden cheese. <laughs> and this is also one of my favorite items. My hamsters love hopping through the little holes and there's lots of other little holes. So I like to stick uh, sprays in there and you may have seen some videos of my hamsters trying to get those sprays. It's just, it makes, it gives an extra enriching item to the playpen. I think these two items are definitely some, some of my favorites <laughs> and just so cute to watch. And lastly, that green tube over there, that is one of those collapsible tubes. I think I got it at Petco early on in my hamster adventure about a year ago. And um, you know, it's not something I would use every day with my hamsters or keep it in their cage long term because they can chew that plastic. But for playtime, I think it's perfect because you really want to provide a lot of tunnels and spaces for your hamsters to hide in so they don't feel unsafe in the playpen area. So these are perfect. And you know what's great about them is they work for Syrian hamsters, dwarf hamsters, any size hamster will fit in that giant tube. And because it's collapsible, you can make it longer, shorter, whatever you want. Um, if you have Syrian hamsters, maybe you could just get a few of those and sprinkle them around the playpen for them to run around in and hide in. Um, but I do try to create some pathways. So going from that clear tube into the green tube, and there's another tube behind that blue wheel. So I try to create some some pathways for my hamsters to run around and hide in so they never feel like they have to figure out um, where to go to find safety, that they always feel nice and safe in the playpen. All right, so this concludes my tour and setup of my rainbow playpen. The next few clips are gonna be of my hamsters in the playpen and I will tell you more about how I use it with my hamsters and what I found works for them or doesn't work for them based on their personality and type of hamster they are. Um, I think a lot of it is just dependent on your hamster and getting to know them and learning what they like and what they don't like, etc. All right, so here is little Shirley, and you'll see that I did add one more item to the playpen. It's a Pyrex container that I got from the Goodwill, and I filled it with coconut fiber, loose, dry coconut fiber, and I sprinkled some of her seed mix in there so she has to work to find it a little bit. And they, all of my hamsters love digging around in the coconut fiber. This is definitely a favorite. I did later have to rearrange a little bit to make it easier for them to get in and out of that Pyrex container because it is a little deep but it's fun that it's nice and deep because they can really go crazy with their digging and um, have a lot of fun. Shirley is a really mellow dwarf hamster and I've had her now about nine months since November of last year. Boy, it's coming up on a year quickly and she is starting to get a little older. You'll see she has some fur loss uh, near her hind legs. Um, I have seen a vet for that and we're not sure if it's a diet thing or hormone thing, but I am uh, trying to give her overall more protein in her diet to see if that helps. Um, and we will, we'll see. I'll let you guys know what happens with her, her fur, but she's still pretty active and sweet as ever. And here she is with the sunflower head. This is when she first was introduced to it and she didn't really know how to use it yet. <laughs> so we had to kind of show her like, oh, these are sunflower seeds, but once she figured it out, it was pretty smooth sailing from there. And you can tell she is just such a sweetie. She came to me from a rescue. I actually, she was my foster hamster who then became my hamster because I just fell in love with her and decided I couldn't imagine her anywhere else but living with me. <laughs> so both her and Laverne are now Officially, my hamster children. And of course, I do want to say if you're on a budget, um, don't feel like you need to buy all of these things at once. It's taken me over a year to collect all of these things to make my perfect rainbow hamster playpen. And you'll see I still have a little box right there. Um, you know, don't be afraid to get creative with boxes and uh, toilet paper tubes. There's a lot you can do with a nice clean cardboard box. Um, and you really don't need to buy a lot of stuff. You can use glass jars or cups. Um, all sorts of things make great hamster toys. So, um, you know, no pressure to have the perfect, most beautiful setup when you first start out. I think it's taken me a long time and I still feel like it's a, a work in progress. 
Little Shirley has this adorable habit of finding herself a nice cozy corner in the fleece and then she'll kind of uh, pull all the fleece around her and get nice and tucked in. It's very cute. And then sometimes I have to go digging for her to figure out where she went because she's, she's found a sweet little area in the corner. And what she's nibbling on there, that's part of the sorghum hybrid, I believe, from Roadwood Grove Shop. And I will put a link to them down below. Um, they're a US-based hamster spray company, um, and I've enjoyed everything I've gotten from them so far. So looking forward to future shipments with them. This is little Steven. He is my big Roborowski and also my most nervous hamster. So you'll see the lighting is a bit lower here um, because he doesn't do as well in the playpen if I don't keep the lights pretty low. Um, he does seem to enjoy his time in the playpen, but I will say I've kind of gotten away from putting him in the playpen quite so often as I was before. Um, even though his body language, you can see he looks totally relaxed and interested and curious. Um, but I did notice that when he would go back home, he became a little bit more reclusive and would, would hide longer from us um, and didn't seem as interested in being out of his hide um, during the normal times when he would be out and about and running on his wheel. So um, I kind of took it back a step. Sometimes I put him in the playpen, but certainly not to the frequency that um, I use the playpen with my other hamsters. Here he is again. <laughs> He's such a cutie. I'm actually really impressed that we got this video footage of him because <laughs> normally we have to turn out all of the lights and in this case I did, I was able to keep one light on and get a little bit of footage of him. And here is Sophia. She is my smallest robo. She's about 25 grams. She's just so cute and little. And um, generally speaking, is much more brave than Steven. Um, she seems to enjoy, <laughs> look at the seed damage there. Um, she seems to really enjoy being out and about. And um, you know, sometimes she gets scared and will run away, but for the most part, she's, she's definitely more comfortable with us petting her. And um, she'll even, on occasion, you know, sit in her hands. Um, Sometimes she'll nip at us, you know, kind of telling us, please put me down. <laughs> but, um, but she overall is a much more brave robo and seems to really enjoy playpen time. So, you know, depending on your robo type, you know, I think some robos are a little more brave and some are not. Um, you know, let them, let them tell you what feels right to them and watch their body language. If they seem happy and excited by getting out and about, um, then, you know, playpen time is probably the right fit for them. So if you're unsure if your hamster is enjoying playpen time or not, here's a few things that I look out for to know that, um, that they want to go home. So usually they're running around, you can tell that their body language is now a bit more anxious and they're sort of scattered and they'll run around, they might hop on the wheel for a second and then zoom around in another spot. Um, to me, sometimes that, that means that they're kind of wound up and they want to go home. And in that case, they might not even come to you when you offer a cup to go home, they might be too wound up. I find I sometimes kind of have to trick them into going home and then they, they calm down a little bit. Um, but if you catch them in the right moment and you don't let them get to that point of anxiety, um, they will often come right to you if they want to go home. So for Shirley and Sophia, if I offer them the cup um, and they're ready to go home, they'll just hop right in their transport cup and I take them home. Um, sometimes they'll hop right in my hands too, but if they don't want to go home, they'll ignore me or try to avoid the cup. And that's usually a pretty good signal to me that they are having fun in the playpen and they want more time. I use the same method to ask them if they want to go to the playpen. If they're awake and they're moving around and they look like they have energy to burn and I'm awake also, then I offer them to cut the cup. And if they get in or they get in my hand, then I know that they do want to be taken out of their cage. And sometimes I'll bring them to the playpen and they won't get out of the cup or they won't get out of my hand. And that's a good enough signal to me that they're, you know, no, I don't wanna do this right now. But if they do, you know, then let them explore and just make sure you stay, stay by them and um, 
you know, offer them a ride home when they're ready so they don't get too freaked out or, or have any unhappy memories associated with their play time experience. And of course, always offer them water. You can see Shirley is <laughs> showing us how to drink in style. I always bring them a water bottle or a little cup of water. That way they uh, don't get too thirsty, um, especially because they tend to be very active in the playpen. I find that they're often very thirsty if they don't drink during their time in the playpen. So I do bring that over if they're there for some duration of time. Now you may have noticed that um, one of my hamsters is missing from these videos, if you watch my other videos, and it is Laverne. It is Shirley's sister who looks very much like Shirley. Um, Laverne has been struggling with a wound near her ear for the last couple months, and um, if you haven't watched that video, I'll link to it below, but um, I've kept Laverne separate from the other hamsters because of this illness. And of course, I never let my hamsters interact in the live, but I do allow them to share the space separately at different times, and I make sure I clean up in between. And of course, I wash the items and disinfect the wooden items frequently to just make sure there's no shared <laughs> shared germs there. But um, but. If you have a sick hamster or you have a new hamster, it's always best to make sure that they don't have shared spaces just to make sure you don't, you know, inadvertently make one hamster sick. But because I've had all of my hamsters for almost a year now and um, they've, other than Laverne, have remained very healthy, so I don't have anything to worry about as far as um, mites or any other diseases or sicknesses that I'm worried about. So I hope this video has been helpful for those of you out there with hamsters and maybe you're wondering how to incorporate free roam or playpen time into your hamster routine um, and hopefully this just gives you a few ideas. Of course, like I said, every hamster is going to be different and of course it depends on your space and um, you know what kind of things you need to watch out for like kids or dogs. Um, you really need to think about all aspects of keeping your hamsters safe and happy during their enrichment time. So if you have experience with your hamsters free roaming or playpen time um, and you'd like to share, I'd love to hear from you. Please leave me a comment below and let me know what's worked for you and your hamster. I would love to hear about it. And um, of course, if you have any other questions or feedback, um, don't hesitate to leave one down below. I'd love to respond to you. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video.